Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we are going to go over the market tips for Hockey Ultimate Team in NHL 21. I wanted to wait uh, you know, a couple weeks into the game because a lot of things change from game to game in terms of content and the ebbs and flows of the market. And now that we've basically seen a full run through of an event and how the market is going to be impacted, I kind of have a better sense as to what to guide you guys on. So we're going to cover everything that I can think of from like extremely basic tips that you know 90% of you are probably going to know but the newer people on my channel that are just getting into the game they might not so I want to go over things like that best practices when to buy when to sell um, you know how to make coins if you're free to play how to make coins if you're pay to play uh, lots of different stuff like that so let's get into all of the market tips for NHL 21's hockey ultimate team all right guys so again it's going to vary considerably depending on your play style so if you are someone like me who puts money into the game it's very very easy to build a extremely talented roster of players now is it also extremely as i just sold something so i get a ton of coins back um is it easy to build a free-to-play team uh the thing that about nhl 21 is that it has never been easier there is literally endless amounts of rewards that you can get in a given week that can help you earn coins and players and work towards collectibles it's the the whole pay to win thing is uh, kind of laughable to me because, well, if you watched my Hut Champion pack opening video, uh, you noticed that there was a player who was in there twice, Regs, the best player in the world. He legit has one of the worst teams that I've seen. It's completely free to play, and he just logs into the game, uses his own settings, and got top five on both consoles. Now, obviously, he's the best in the world, essentially, so, you know, obviously, he's going to have a much easier time, but regardless if it was pay to win i would be able to beat everyone and that just isn't the case nine times out of ten the better player usually wins but there is a lot of those one times uh in which you know uh, your gretzky will just flick up and score and to be honest that's just hockey in general but regardless i don't want to get into that because that's just going to be a whole disaster in my comment section let's just talk about dates first of all because you need to be aware of dates throughout the week that are important that will impact the market first is the rewards so Squad battles, those rewards will come out on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Rivals, online, or Hut Rivals will come out at Wednesday at 5 p.m. And Hut Champs will come out at Wednesday as well, only at 3 a.m. in the morning, okay? And then Hut Rush, obviously, you get rewards throughout the entire thing, but those aren't really going to impact you all that much. So, that being said, that's our first, like, little lesson, I guess you could say. Wednesdays are going to be the time to buy, now, obviously, if everyone is ripping packs, the vast majority of the player base that plays this game um, will get a pack of some sort on Wednesday, whether it be from Hut Champs, whether it be from, uh, from Rivals. You will get a ton of them, and that's going to make it very, very easy to buy certain cards because obviously there's just more of them. When people want to get coins fast for a card that they ripped, the first thing they're going to do is go to the auction house and look at what the cheapest one up um, is going for and then slightly undercut it, and that's where you can kind of take advantage. So uh, those days are very important. Now, if you are looking to buy cards, Wednesdays and Thursdays are typically your best or Fridays, um, usually people will rip packs on Fridays. You don't really get any rewards, but um, when there's a new event, things like that, Fridays at 5 p.m., Friday night, people tend to rip packs a little bit more. Maybe they get paid, so um, that's usually a, a good time to buy as well. Selling, though, is Monday and Tuesday. So as the week goes on, right, Monday and Tuesday, there's no free packs given out, and, you know, it's really random for someone to want to buy packs on a Monday and Tuesday. So that is when the market is going to dry up the most, and you're going to have the chance to make the most amount of coins. So you could buy a card on, let's say, Thursday night after Squad Battle Rewards come out. You bought the Team of the Week Headman. He, there is a strong chance that he might go up a little bit in price, on Monday and Tuesday because there's less of them on the market. He's a sought-after card, and people will get desperate to pay more coins. Okay, so those are the dates that you want to remember. Monday and Tuesday, those are selling days. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, those are buying days. So there's your first tip. Now let's get into um, just some things to make the auction house a little bit easier. Teach the guys that don't really know what they're looking for and what they're looking at um, some things to help you buy cards and, and you know work the market. 
thing I need to mention is that there is a patch coming that will fix the price range and it'll actually have a buy now filter that will come into the game that's a glitch in the game and there will be a patch for it because it's very frustrating it really hurts your ability to search for cards because all you can do right now is search for let's say well I'll teach you guys what to do for gold cards so put up a thousand okay and no minimum price and you search oops, change it to gold this is how to make coins okay guys if you are free to play and you are looking to grind the market here is something. Listen to me very closely. There is no easy way for everyone to grind the market to make money. Because if there was, everyone would be hut rich. If when, when people say they are grinding the market, they are basically playing the market as much as they are playing the game. So if you are someone who does not have a lot of time and you want free pat you want you know free cards improve your team it's probably not going to be through the market unless you have a significant amount of time and understanding and knowledge of each card's price the way that you're going to improve your team is through packs from squad battles rivals hut rush and hut champs okay you are getting tons of free packs throughout the week and those will be what you use to improve your team okay working the market takes a lot of time and effort and i don't want to sugarcoat it and say that i know a special trick that is going to make you hut rich because no youtuber that makes a video like this is going to be able to follow through on that okay i want to be very clear on that so here is the best practice for people that do not have a lot of coins to make coins okay so what you want to do is you'll see now there's a lot of start prices. There's no buy now, okay? So let's take this one, for example. Let's go. This one's ending in 20 seconds. See how there's no current bid? 850, okay? You place a bid, all right? Now you're at 850, okay, for that card. Let's keep going. Uh, here's an 800 one. Place bid on that, 850. Anyone that is not 850, okay? Anyone that is not 850, you go through all this list, and you could get outbid, that's fine. 850 is kind of the max that you want to go and the reason being is that it takes 50 gold cards to make a collectible whether it be an icon or a gold collectible okay so at 850 that's about 42k why is that a good deal here is why if you go to collectibles right now okay whoops one second oh wow okay that's okay i was gonna say is that by now all right so if you go to collectibles all right let's do icons for example Look at the price that they are going for. It's in the high 60s, which is absolutely nuts. And if I see any one of my viewers say in the comments that they bought their collectibles in the auction house, I want you to not comment. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know where I was going with that, but I, please, guys, do not. You are saving yourself almost 30,000 coins by sitting there and doing it that way. Does it take a lot longer? Yes. Is 30,000 coins a lot for a free-to-play player? Yes. Okay, same thing goes, you know, for the gold collectibles. And gold collectibles are going to fluctuate more than icon collectibles will. Icon collectibles are going to work in um, the way that they're priced. Those are going to be huge ebb and flows because there's going to come a time where the icon market kind of crashes. And the reason for that is because as the season goes along, icons are going to become less and less valuable. I mean, if you take a look right now, if we go and look at, you know, let's say 85 overalls, we'll go to master icons and we'll go to overall rating. Okay. Now these were going for well over a hundred thousand, you know, about a week ago and like, okay, right there, Marcus Dazzler, 41. Okay. Uh, Car or sorry, Yvonne Cornway. Well, that's one third. That's he's a sought after card. Pat LaFontaine, 73,000. The 85s are starting to fall in price, okay? And the 84s, they're a little bit cheaper to make. But again, you can make a solid card for that price. So they're going for a little much cheaper than they were when they started. And that's because, you know, there's event cards. There's, you know, team of the weeks, prime times that are just as valuable. And more often than not, they're more exciting cards to use. A lot of the player base is a lot younger, and they don't really know who Johnny Busick is or Mike Gartner. Would you rather use Connor McDavid or mckinnon than someone that you don't know all right that's just usually how it goes so keep that in mind as the icons continually to get less and less useful um then the icon price the icon collectible price will start to drop and then you're going to see a gigantic spike when they release the silver icon upgrades because that will happen at some point boosting you know let's say the 85 gardener up to an 88 okay it's going to probably require a couple gold or icon collectibles to do that meaning that at that point it's going to go from the lowest icon collectible price to the highest so it will be drastic spikes 
Gold collectibles, on the other hand, they are going to be like a wave because as an event starts, okay, they are going to start around 40k, 45k again because a ton of coins are, or a ton of packs are getting opened, okay? So they're going to be cheap at the beginning, and then everyone is going to try and make the master set items as fast as possible. And when that happens on that Monday and Tuesday, that first week, you're going to start to see the rise of gold collectibles. In the middle of the event, so usually about the first weekend afterwards, you're going to see icon or uh, gold collectibles be at their cheapest again because a lot of people have the free or they've they've made their untradeable master set item for that event they've purchased their card they don't need any more you know so it's going to you know fluctuate and then as a new event comes the price is going to skyrocket again because everyone knows now that a new event's coming you're gonna need gold collectibles again it's just uh, not a good time to buy them so it's gonna be a lot more ebb and flow for uh, gold collectibles icon collectibles you'll see a steady decline and then a heavy incline uh, when the uh, when the cards um, go back up in price so again, let's just I just want to go over this one more time. If you are looking to make money in this game and you are a free to play player, all right? The way you do it, you set the level to gold. You go price range, you go maximum 1000, okay? Maximum 1000 and set it, you could set it to uh, NHL doesn't really matter because it it really doesn't matter at all. And you just sit here and you look at the start price. So the current bid's 900, you lay off that. And again, it's going to take a lot of time, but eventually you will start to get some pulls. Now, if every card is here at 850, go to 9. That's still saving you a considerable amount of money, especially in the icon collectible landscape, okay? But at 1,000, that's when, you know, the market is at its worst, and I really wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, but you will see, you know, as the events go on and the weeks go on and the certain days of the week, they're going to be a lot cheaper than normal. Um, so just keep that in mind. That is how you make quick small money in huts and you do it long enough you're going to build up your coin bank as a free-to-play player and there you go so how do you earn money and make money as someone who has a large coin stack so let's say you have a hundred k um that's you know you've hit a hundred k now you want to make a little bit more money all right well let's start with the team of the week all right so team of the week they come out wednesdays at 5 p.m important another day you need to remember okay we're gonna take uh, the headman, if I can find one real quick as an example, because I actually, you know, f was able to luck out in here. So first thing, if you pack one of these cards, and I'm talking about the high end um, cards in Team of the Week or Prime Times, do not sell them. Because what is happening right now is that they're coming with default ranges that are far below what they are actually worth. Headman was capped at like 100k, and the second you put him up, people were instantly buying him because the max you could put him up for is 100k, but he's worth far more than that, so no matter what, they're going to be instantly bought. If you just wait, EA has been showing that either in about a day or less than a day, usually it's later that night, they will increase the ranges so now Headman can be sold for a lot more. So when he came out yesterday... All right. Uh, again, packs weren't open. There was no squad battles. Yesterday when he came out, there was a ton of packs, but it was the first night of Team of the Week. That So obviously the least amount of Team of the Week cards are being pulled. They're brand new. They, he was going for about 200K. I was able to find one at 150. I immediately put him back up on the market for you know 175, undercut you know the other guys, and there you go. Team of the Weeks, you need to remember that as the week goes on, they're going to get cheaper. So if you pack a team of the week, wait for the range to be adjusted, and you'll know when the range is adjusted because there will actually be cards. If you go and search a card that's very sought after, like a good, you know, let's say McKinnon or Headman, and there's none on the market, it means that something's going on and the range is probably not high enough, okay? You need to sell it sooner rather than later because team of the weeks are in packs all week long. Okay, so the longer, obviously, the more packs that are ripped throughout the week, the more cards that are going to get put into the system, and it no longer becomes a demand to try and buy him because there are so many. Prime times work a little bit different, guys, okay? So there was a, you know, a debacle that happened with the Sidney Crosby that just came out. Again, that was a range issue. People were not able to put him up for a lot of money. I think it was 200 k was the most, and the second he got put up, he was just getting bought immediately. They fixed the range on him, and now he's going for over. He was going for over 500. If they have distributor, I find that right now, whether it's you know, the Tyler Bertuzzi is another example. He was an 83 prime timer um, that came out, and he was getting sold immediately for 10,000 coins because having distributor getting a card that's 83 overall is far better than having you know that silver card in your lineup that's random with distributor. That's obviously far worse. So. 
I find that any card that has distributed, just wait and see with the market. But prime times, guys, if you pack one, it is far better to sell him the next day or afterwards. And again, it's supply and demand, okay? The first day that they're out, the first night, the day that they are out, prime times are usually only out for about a day. Then they're in packs, you'll see the most of them on the market. But once they're out of packs, their prices usually go up because they can't get there's no other way to get them. So a sought after card like Crosby skyrockets in price because now, you know, everyone wants to get them, and there's no reason to buy this card for five hundred K. Essentially he is, you know, Jean Beliveau with slightly better face offs and distributor. Which is fine. That's great. But I would much rather have a far cheaper card that, you know, is just fine, okay? Don't go spend 500k. The reason why he is so expensive is because he's a holy grail card that people want to use to flex. There's just none on the market. There's not very many. There's only one way to obtain it, and that is through buying it from somebody else. So keep that in mind, guys. Prime times only last a day. You want to wait a day until they are out of packs before you look to sell them. Same thing with buying them. Buying them, obviously, they're going to be cheaper while they're in packs later that, you know, usually right after launch of the packs, like 5 you know, five p.m., uh, 6 p.m. roughly, because that's when, again, when people are just throwing them out there. But, um, you know, if they are if they are a sought-after card, if they're a high-rated card, if you're getting looking at 84s, they're probably not, because, again, it's not really all that exciting. It's not going to be in that high demand, even when they're out of packs. Now let's talk about some tips and tricks that you can use on the market to, you know, to help you know, sell things a little bit faster. So um, doing sets and whatnot, that's fine. The one thing I'll recommend, if you do open packs of any kind, or even if you get free packs, I would always do the silver upgrade set okay because selling silver cards is not going to net you an extremely high amount of coins but doing the set will help you towards the milestone of opening sets which gets you coins packs and collectibles um and this also gives you a shot at you know a great card obviously you're probably i'm probably not going to pull anything here but even if it doesn't it gives you about a thousand two thousand coins in value because now you have two more gold cards that you can throw into a set for an icon collectible so save your silver players and put them in. If you're a free-to-play player, even if you're not a free-to-play player, I would not recommend this gold upgrade set because even if you get a good pull, which is so rare, okay, it's costing you eight cards to do it. You're getting two back, which is nice, so it costs you six cards to do it, all right? But that's 6,000 coins in value, and now you can't sell any of these. And now, you know, you do six of them, and you've basically made an icon collectible. Or a gold collectible. So if you don't have a reroll, you're basically, you know, you just kind of toast there. So I would not do that set. I wouldn't recommend it. Not really worth it. But what I would do is let's say you want to sell some cards and you don't know how much they're going for, but you you want to make sure that you're getting the correct amount. Okay, totally understandable. So let's do uh, Robin Laner, Lundquist, and we'll do, wow, I have a ton of goalies. Alexander Radulov. I want to know these three cards, and I don't want to go through my collection to find them and whatnot. If you put them into sets here, you can click on it right here and hit search auction house. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull up all the cards that now there's 94 of them. So this is a bad example, but this is how you the, the fastest and most efficient way. Let's do Radulov. Let's see. He's probably still going for bare minimum now, too, as well. 5,000, a little bit more. 2,000, I don't see. So what I would do is look at the price range so for smaller cards like this it kind of sucks because the range is small there's so many of them there's 54 of them right and the range is all around 2500 look for the cheapest card and if the cheapest card is you know if there's five or six other cards that are around that range so we saw a 2000 that was the only one there's 2500 a bunch of 2500s so what i would do is i would undercut it sell it for like 1800 you'll probably get it bought However, if you want to make sure, if you want to try and get the most amount, just undercut the cheapest one by 50, and, you know, I would do it overnight. Overnight is when there's the least amount of cards. Again, there's not very many people awake in North America, and, you know, Finland is just getting up, so there's not a huge amount of the player base at night. So if you sell your cards or put them up for auction at night, that's usually the best time to make the most amount of coins on them. But you're not going to make a ton of card to coins on these cards. But, again, always make sure you're selling it for the most amount as possible, so you can get about 2000 for Alexander Radulov. All right, so that little trick is done. And again, that's a super valuable one that you can do. Uh, the team item trade-ins, again, I, the reason why I'm showing you these in the market is because it can help you um, make a better team, and I think that's kind of just in general what you want to do. The silver jersey exchange, okay, you can do that once every day. Um, if you opened up packs, and even if you have, again, you're free to play and you've just opened up packs from you know squad battles, rivals, all that kind of stuff, you might have a ton of jerseys from silver jerseys. Again, 
Don't sell them because there's no point. You're not going to get a ton. You're not going to get any money for them. That's worth it. Don't quick sell them. Turn them into sets because you can actually get a base pack, which again is nothing. I pulled a McKinnon out of that. All it takes is one pull in 60 to make it worth it. And then the other one is the gold jersey exchange. You get a ton of gold jerseys in packs. It only costs 10 to get an actual premium pack. Do that every single day. So this one, this one, and if you can get the logo exchange um, from the silvers as well, do these three every single day that you can to maximize your chance to actually pull cards. And as well, do the silver card. Use the gold upgrade to actually just search onto the market. That's the best way to search on the market and, and look for what costs for each card. So again, let's talk about some other tips about, you know, potential cards and ways to you know actually score some cheap cards so let's take taves for example because he's not a bare minimum price you go to compare price the cheapest taves that's either going to be up what you're going to want to do is see where it says time remaining i don't like doing this with every single card because you'll have to memorize you know you'll have to memorize what each card costs and that's just going to take a long time and again i'm doing this video for the majority of the player base not the you know the super sweats that have hours to memorize each card and whatnot uh, because honestly i play this game for a living and i don't memorize each card i usually just do it as i go but that's probably because i spend money on the game so i don't really need to worry about them auction house very often but let's like take this for example let's say take taves okay so his price is around, I see a 6K. So go through all these and make sure there isn't one that's far cheaper. But the best time to do it is right at the hour mark. So see how this one is 1 hour 16 minutes and this one is 57 minutes. So this one just went on the market. Check around this for every card that you look in. So just pick out a couple. So we'll take Taze for example and see if the one that comes up is extremely cheap. If the buy now is a couple thousand um, cheaper than what the ch next cheapest one is, buy it and then resell it. But... Other than that, go and look through all... There's 72, so this is kind of a bad example card to do it with. Uh, let's do it with a higher-end card. Let's do it with a master item, okay? Um, we'll do it with Panarin, okay? So what you do is you... like, like the, Again, this is on the very, very high end. So see how there's two that are about 400,000, so you're really not going to make any money there. But what you want to do is sit for the time expiring because you want to win bids, okay? You can get into a bidding war as the time goes out, and all you have to do is hit place bid, and if you have the coins, you just hit place bid, and there you're off and going. Set an amount for yourself that you don't want to go over, okay? And that's an easy way to get cards you want. If there's a card you really want, and let's say it's a synergy you need, it's not a master item, but it's a, you know, a team of the week Kucherov, something like that, right? Go and look for the expiring time because that's the cheapest way you're usually going to get it. Other than that, you're looking at just like getting lucky. And by getting lucky, I mean like you, you're just the one that happens to see the card pop up at a very, very cheap buy now. So this is at 95. I wouldn't bid on this because the, there's a buy now for 91. Um, but this is a kind of, again, so 85 right now in 45 minutes. You can save yourself about 6,000 coins if you grab that one, okay? And again, it's all just about waiting. But normally, there's usually some times where there's, cards that are just far cheaper on the start price and those are the ones you want to target when you're looking to buy specific cards and again same thing if you're trying to flip them okay if you can get them for cheap so like what i like to do is you know you set the say you get you know a hundred thousand coins again all right you set it at 86 or even 87 okay and then what you do is again you just look right here you learn the market of the more expensive cards so um, let's see if there's any here. Um, okay, Price, bad example. T John Tavares, bad example. Let's see if we can find one. Someone that's got a cheap start price that's much lower than what it should be is what you're looking for. Um, now, a lot of them are just going to put it up for a little bit lower than the, than the, than the price of uh, the buy now, which is the smart way to do it. If you're going to sell, unless it's a card that it, there is none and you're not sure how, what to put it up for, I would not put up for a start now with no buy now price. That is, that's you know, way without it. So like, here's a perfect example. So Tarasenko right here is going for 36k, but his current bid right now is 15. So if we go and you hit compare card, now you get to take a look at all of the all the Tarasenkos. All right, so 15k. Is there anyone that's close to it? 21, 18. That 18 kind of sucks. 18 is the next closest, and then it's 21. So you could even buy both and then put it up for 20. But let's just say that that one for 18 isn't there. You win that you sit on this bid, you try and get it for 16, maybe the max you put it for is 17, and then you flip it for 21. That's just the, you know, the ins and outs. Look at this one's at 6,900. Now you're probably not going to win them. There's probably a lot of people sitting there doing it right now. But again, you have to have patience. The market, everyone would be rich if it was easy. That's just the best way to do it. 
Lastly, I want to talk about events. So obviously during this first event, you know, um, the cards fluctuated a ton. When they first come out, they are going to be very, very expensive, okay? They are going to be near the most expensive that they will be throughout. As Because everyone wants them immediately. There's no patience, right? The thing is, is that once people start to make the untradeable versions, because it is cheaper to just make them with collectibles, okay? The price is going to drop because the demand is a lot less. Again, these master icons are easily obtainable by everyone. There is a way to go and just get one by creating them with, uh, with icon collectibles or gold collectibles, sorry. So these are not the super rare cards. Now, the 90s, obviously, those ones, that's a, bad, that, like, that's a different example. But the 89s, those ones will drop in price. What will happen, though, is I found out today, as the event nears an end, this is not like NHL 18 or even 19, really, where the next event, instead of seeing 89 and 90 overall master sets, you're not going to see 91 and 92s. It's more than likely going to be another 89 overall set. In fact, we got a leak of one of the master set items, and that was the Zach Cassian, and he's an 89. Okay, meaning that these are going to hold their value a lot longer than past games. Because again, Nicholas, the the Hut developer, um, you know, he came onto the team last year and he's made it his mission to try and you know s- slow down progression a little bit. It's an ultimate team mode, so obviously you need to increase it to keep interest and whatnot. That's fine, but doing it at a lot slower pace means that these are going to have a lot more value throughout. Okay, so what happens is near the end of the event. Let's take Heisken in, for example, okay? I have the 90, but the 89, you know, it was going for like 400k. Now it's going for like near 500 because people know that after tomorrow at 5 p.m., there is no way to obtain him other than buying him on the auction house, and he is going to be a very valuable card for quite some time because he has the second best synergy combo in Distributor and Speedster. Synergy, uh, Distributor and Howitzer would be the best. So these cards are all going to go up in price. Now, throughout the event, in the middle, about halfway through the event, um, again, on like uh, on the Wednesday, so the following Wednesday and Thursday, when you when the most amount of packs are being opened, the event's been on through about a week now. That is when it is time to buy. I bought this one specifically, this Nylander, for 260 okay? And that wasn't, wasn't a crazy price for him when I bought him. But now he's going for over 400 so, like, it just what happens as the as the demand is going to skyrocket, people, you know, just run out of these to buy, and the same thing's going to happen every single event. So, if you are looking to buy a master icon, do not wait till the end of the event, like I did this last one. Make sure you buy it throughout, hopefully around the middle one, as that's going to be the cheapest it is going to be. And lastly, I want to talk about event sets. Okay, so the fifty players for a gold collectible. That's worth it, okay? So just think in terms of what it is on the market. So if a gold collectible is selling for 60 k in the auction house, don't spend the 60 k trade in the car, the gold cards and buy it for 50 It's untradeable. If you're going to use it anyways, what's the point of having a tradable version? That doesn't make any sense. These ones, for example, this one and a gold collectible to trade in, make sure the card that you're getting is worth it. The, the Briere and the Neely were not worth it to spend all the money to get that. So make sure that the card that you're doing is worth it. Now, the Lit versus Grit, this is the tradable version. This is going to be in throughout every event. There's going to be an untradable version that's 8, um, and there's going to be a tradable that's 10. Everyone learned last year what happens if you do not take tradable for the most part, is that in about two months, you are going to be absolutely locked into your team. Okay, now at some point down the road, there's probably going to be a, a set that comes out where it's like trade in the 89 Nylander and you'll get the 95 Tavares or whatever the event is. That is more likely going to happen, but it's not promised and it's not guaranteed. And it won't happen for a very long time if it does. So be prepared. If you do the eight gold collectibles, okay, if you do the eight gold collectibles and you're fairly confident that if you just wait a little bit longer, you can do the 10. It is worth it. But again, make sure that the value matches it, okay? So right now, if you wanted to make neat, let's see Bergeron, okay? Bergeron's going for about 400k, all right? It costs you 500,000 coins in value to make him. So you want to buy him instead, okay? Sell the gold players for over 1,000 coins or around 1,000 coins and make him. Make sure that you do that math in your head before you do it, okay? Now, if he's going for early on, if he's going for like 600, 
then make the tradable version. It's going to allow you to at least be able to in the future, even if he drops down, let's say you can only sell him for like 150,000 coins in about a month. That's fine because at least you'll be able to get some coins back. The guys that cheaped out by two collectibles, they're toast. They're locked in with that card. Now, every event, usually every event, there's one card, maybe two, that it's okay to do that with. High skin in this event is going to be a card that you can use pretty much until, you know, January probably because of his synergies alone and he's just dominant in all of his stats and whatnot. So be careful of that. But like, let's say Suter, for example, his shot's really rough and that would not be worth it. He is going to probably be, you know, the fifth or sixth, seventh, eighth best defenseman in three weeks, which means that your value is of that card is going to be significantly lower. Okay. So if you can make the tradable set, but make sure if you have untradable cards, so like, you know, when I said buy it, if it's cheaper, if you have a lot of untradable golds, then obviously because you're taking the untradable sets, which you should if you have a really crap team, if you take the rivals rewards, if you take the un double untradables is what you should be doing if you have a crap team, um, make them. Obviously, you want to make them because, again, you're not going to be able to sell those cards. But if you have a ton of tradable gold cards, don't be cashing them in for 10 when that's going to cost you 500k in value when you could just go sell them and buy them for 375 okay so that was an absolute ton of information it was way too long of a video but i just wanted to go over everything that came to my head in terms of when to buy what to buy what to look out for things like that if you have any other further questions leave it in the comment section of the video or come check me out on twitch i go live at 10 a.m eastern time every day and ask me questions about the market i've no i have no problem helping you guys out so guys thank you for watching please subscribe for daily nhl content and have a good one